Hey everybody, welcome to the Neville Gossip Podcast. I'm your host, FryGuy7571. With me as always is my good buddy Anders. Anders, how you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm excited to be on this with you tonight. Yep, me too. This is episode seven. Lucky number seven. As many of you guys know, we've been doing this for about eight weeks now. We took a week off for the holiday and for family time. So we appreciate you guys giving us a rest. But tonight, I want to kind of change it up. And I want to kind of do some explaining and kind of fix some stuff with some of the people on the sub. I want to kind of explain why I am the way I am and why it works, because it's something Anders would also do with me. and. To some of you, seems like we're being mean or we don't want to help, but in actuality, it's to keep you from making a bad situation worse. A lot of you guys are super focused on these circumstances. Now, I can tell you, I have yet to come across any case where the circumstances were worse than mine. I'm not saying (laughs) it because I'm proud of it, but I mean, like, let's be honest. If we want to talk about who the biggest fuck up here is, it's me, right? Anders, you saw what an absolute shit show this whole thing became. Yeah. And it was because... No, you're saying. Yeah, I wouldn't shut up about it. I wouldn't stop talking about the circumstances how things were going to get I, worse and become a problem. Things were, yeah, weren't never going to work out. Yeah, you don't understand, Anders. How do I just forget it? You can't just forget it. This is my life. This is my money. This is my kid. And he would just tell me, you can't focus on that. You got to keep your eyes on God and not on the circumstances. So, last night, for example, we had a gentleman who got on there and decided he was gonna break all the rules. He was gonna tell old story for context. He was gonna talk bad story. He was gonna just not care about any of our rules, the way we do things, any of it, and was just gonna word vomit and then be like, why, why, tell me why. (laughs) Complaining. (laughs) Complaining, bitching and moaning, right? And to the sub's credit, A lot of you guys have figured out what I'm trying to do, and you're getting on board with it, and you're actually, and I appreciate this, helping me out and catching these guys for me. When I miss a post or whatever, you're reporting them and letting me know, hey, this person's asking, how do I do it? How do I believe? This person's venting. They're telling a bad story. This person's all about the circumstances. So I really want to take some time and say thank you for that. I really appreciate it. It helps make moderating the sub a lot easier. But I want to explain why I am the way with you guys in the sub. And Anders can chime in because he had to be this way with me. (laughs) So that you get that it's not to be mean. It's actually to keep you from making a bad situation worse. Absolutely. Yeah. The more you focus on your circumstances, the bigger an obstacle it's going to seem to be. We've said many times, we've used stories like Peter falling through the water after he's been walking on the water and Jesus calls him. He takes his eye off of Jesus and puts his eyes on the storm. David with Goliath. He beat Goliath with a pebble because he kept his eyes on God and not on Goliath. So which one are you going to be? Are you going to be David and keep your eye on God? Or are you going to be Peter? And even when Jesus is right there walking you through it, you're going to focus on the storm. And not all of you, but there are some of you that just can't stop focusing on the storm. So then you come to the sub, you break all the rules, but you think it's okay. You don't understand. My circumstance is impossible. I need you to tell me. 
How do I get past this? How? Why? When? When will it stop? How do I do? How long will it take? Ah! And we say, well, first of all, we don't ask any of that here. That stuff's in the book. Second, you can't keep telling it because the more you tell it, the worse it gets. Third, everything you just said was literally just a story. And it's the only reason it's happening to you and staying alive in your 3D. So what we suggest is you read and really learn how to do this. Anders used to tell me all the time, like, look, man, this is not a quick fix. You got to undo all these many years of bad programming. You've got to, you got to find a way to start believing. I spent so much time telling a bad story about God, even. Mm -hmm. that in my life, I get close to what I want. And then he kicks it out from underneath me. Remember all the times, yep. like the TV show, for example, the movie, all that stuff. Like, hey, they gave us 13 million in financing, but I can't be in it. This happened, but this happened. And they're crazy. It was just like, I feel like I'm getting close, but it never works out. I'm getting so pissed at God. He makes me feel like it's, it finally came through. And then he yanks it out from underneath me again. And guys, that was only happening because I kept telling that story. I kept believing that God was really against me. Mm -hmm. You know? But he wasn't. He was saying, I'm giving you what you believe. That's how this works. It doesn't matter either way to me. It's all creation. It's all experience. It's all growth. It's all learning. So in God's eyes, it's not really bad. And if it did get bad to us, he could just pull us right out of it. But you got to believe. That's why I tell you guys, step one is you got to believe. If you remember when I first started this sub, all these people made fun of me and said, ah, you got to believe. I know what he's going to say. You just got to believe. Just read the books. He doesn't want to coach anybody. He thinks he's God. He likes being a gatekeeper. He's lost his way. That's what this kid told me the other night is I responded to him with such vitriol and whatever he was saying. I don't even remember. He was so impressed with his <laughs> vocabulary. And he's just like, I'm going to use every big word I know and try to insult you. Meanwhile, I actually answered his question. His question was about Neville and his wife. And he was clearly hadn't read the story because he was talking about detanglements or I don't know what he was even saying. And he didn't even understand that the story was a very short story. Neville doesn't really get into chapter after chapter about SPs. When he talks <laughs> in the beginning about marriage, he's like, you don't want to marry that guy. You just want to be married. So forget that guy. Go to bed imagining you're married and the right guy will show up. But then Neville himself meets a woman. He's like, no, I want to marry that woman. And the point of that story was all he did was go to bed every night imagining she was next to him and she was his wife and a lot of you know the story because you've read he didn't do much else he didn't lift a finger and his first wife had to give him a divorce because she got arrested and she needed neville to bail her out so they came to an agreement they'd been married very early on neville didn't have a third party he had a roommate that was in love with him but she went away too and the girl that he liked came back and he married her. He doesn't really get into it too much because he's like, all I did was go to sleep believing she was my wife and everything I needed to have happen, happened. I just kept staying in the state of the wish fulfilled. I just kept saying nothing but she is my wife. She is next to me. That's all he did. It is that simple. By that time also, Neville really had mastered this and understood that worrying about it, focusing on circumstances, does nothing but keep them alive and give them strength. So when you guys come to the sub and I'm like, hey, man, no old story. Hey, man, knock it off. Hey, man, that's only happening because you tell that story. Hey, man, you don't understand. You should read. And then I even explain it to you like I did to this guy. He did not even see that I answered his question. He didn't see that I told him it's not what you think that story is. And this is why I tell you guys to read. Because you're coming and asking, you don't even know what the story is about or how it even goes. 
But because you have a third party, you want it to be about that. So you heard something about it somewhere and you come here and you've got it wrong. And I say, first of all, you got it wrong. Second, read. Third, like the other rule is I don't do stuff to people I wouldn't want done to me. This guy, you know, wasn't broken up with for this other person. He didn't have a third party. Now his ex-boyfriend who broke up with him and he never got back because he wouldn't do the work or read, started dating somebody else and that person got further with him than he did. And he wanted to go break it up. I don't help do that. You know? You guys can do whatever you want. I just personally choose not to do stuff like that. So instead of him getting mad at himself and being like, well, I took my sweet ass time and waited years to do anything about this, even though he claimed to have been reading the book. But the other thing, too, is he was very clear about the fact that he was a student and he didn't have time to read and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It turns out he's a culinary student. Supposedly a graduate culinary student. I didn't even know they had graduate school for culinary students, but great. But I mean, you know, when you're not in the kitchen, it would seem like you have a lot of time. My point is he was trying to make excuses as to why he couldn't read and why we had to just do the work for him. And why couldn't we just tell him what page it was on and explain the story to him so he didn't even have to. So on one hand, he wants to tell, tell us what page it's on, but then he's like, just tell me so I don't even have to read it. I heard it in a lecture. Can you at least tell me what lecture it is and give me a link so I can listen to it so I don't have to read it? And I was like, bro, you're just being lazy. That's not even how the story went. I can't really help you because, like, the truth was when I gave him his answer, he completely missed it because he was in victim mode and so far focused on the circumstances. He couldn't even see when he was getting the help and the answer he wanted. But then on top of it, he's in victim mode, so he just assumes I'm going to be mean to him. That's the other thing, as a lot of people show up thinking, I'm going to get yelled at for this, Bry guy's going to scream at me. Meanwhile, I'm not screaming at anybody. I'm just like, hey, man, you can't do that. Hey, you got to read. Hey, you don't understand, right? And just like this guy, a lot of you guys show up and you're like, so I'm doing this technique and I'm doing the five by 55 and I'm doing this. And I'm like, none of that's Neville. None of that's Neville. This is a Neville only sub also. So if you're doing that stuff, this is probably not the place to come. But then they get mad at me. Well, I went everywhere else, and they told me no. Again, they keep telling a bad story. Nobody will help me. I can't get the answers I need. All they really have to do is go read the books. And then if they have questions, at least they'll know what questions they have. At least they'll really understand what they're not understanding. But to come to us and be like, hey, explain it all. All these books, explain it all. Just tell me how to do it because I, I can't read right now. And I see it mostly with like the younger kids. And that's why I'm very like not big on college kids and high school kids. I don't want any minors on the sub. But Anders, would you say that your relationships in high school and college were relationships you would consider actual real relationships compared to when you were an adult and you were on your own and you were paying your bills and you know you weren't under somebody else's care or limited because you were requiring somebody else to finance your life those relationships aren't really as serious as like the grown-up ones right am i wrong with that or and you, you hear me yeah, it's a totally different thing. And so I think you guys, especially, I mean, in high school, even more so, I mean, there's, you know, certainly my, my parents met each other in college and, and, and that, that's great. Um, and it'd be great if more people happen to more people. But, and, you know, there are definitely people I know who, you know, married their college sweetheart and, and it worked out great. Um, but yeah, you guys have to be open to, you know, the opportunities and, and the bridge of incidents. Um, which are going to be coming forward. And that's that's the big picture, um, which we want you guys to, to understand. So yeah, I think I think focusing, trying to focus on that now is not not good. You guys still have a lot of growth and you don't want to get married just yet anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> you want to wait, probably, you, you is, want to wait till you're out of college. So yeah, the other thing is all this is happening so you can grow. 
So you can figure out who you really are. So you can figure out who you really want to be with. And, you know, I, myself and Anders are two guys who got married later in life. But trust me, we were out there. We were having fun. We just weren't meeting anybody we wanted to get married to. And then it was like we did and we're like, okay, that's it. Like, I think you had a pretty quick engagement too, right? I think mm -hmm. mine was like four months, five months. Meanwhile, right before that, I was like, I'll never get married. I don't want kids. And then suddenly I'm like, I want lots of babies with you. Let's <laughs> move in together. Right? And then, yeah, I think then gonna, I, yeah, we were pretty, pretty quickly knew we, knew yeah. we were going to want to get, get married and, and all that. Yeah. So. But it was because we dated so many people. I remember that conversation on your rooftop when I broke up with that one girl and I was like, oh, I wish I never met her. And you're like, oh, that's a horrible thing to say. And you told me about ex-girlfriends, even like, I think it was, there was one you said you knew she was gonna even break your heart. And I was like, why the hell would you stay with her? And you're like, to learn. Cause it was gonna be good for a little while too. You know, now I understand better what I want, what I don't want. And I was like, I, I can't understand that. <laughs> now we know why I got in a bunch of trouble later, right? <laughs> I wasn't open to any of these ideas. I was like a lot of you guys, oh, shut up and just tell me what I got to do to get this fixed, you know? But you guys get so mad and take it so personal. And all I'm trying to do is snap you out of the bad state that you are just like, you won't stop talking about. And you have to. You can't keep focusing on it and think that the situation is going to change. Saying to yourself, I can't get the answers. It's not working is just a story. And that's why that's happening. Like I told you guys, I said I was bad at sats. I was bad at sats. I started saying I was amazing at doing sats and I became amazing a couple days later. But I told <laughs> myself past relief. To where I was like, yeah, I am pretty good. Yeah, well, how hard could this be? Oh, wow, look, I finally read and realized I don't have to fall asleep doing sets. He just tells you it'd be great if you could because then you got seven, eight hours of nonstop being in the state. So then if you've been also doing it frequently throughout the day, you're doing frequency and duration. Can't lose with that. But you don't have to fall asleep in the state you don't have to fall asleep looping the scene and like dream about the scene all night that's not how it works you fall asleep looping the scene and it puts you in the state and then the rest of the night your brain is just working on believing it's like remembering that that's the last thing you thought about so usually you'll dream about it you'll feel like you're back together all the good things right it's just because it was the last thing you were thinking about this yeah, stuff definitely really beats going going to sleep worrying about everything and yeah, yeah, and I like what you said too about how focusing on the circumstances make them seem insu insuperable or, or you can't overcome them <clears throat> because it's like okay, there's like all this stuff you could look out out, out there. Just, just think about it in real life, all these things you can look at in real life, and then you realize like the thing you're focused on it's actually not that big, and it actually doesn't take up that much space if you like put your finger in front of it or something like that. You realize like oh yeah, it doesn't take up that much space, but it seems really big because you're focused on it because that's what you're looking at, and that's the same. With all this other stuff, when you're looking at the circumstances in your life, they seem to loom large and they kind of shut out everything else rather than if you're focusing on, you know, positive circumstances or you're focusing on the fact that, you know, things can, can change, things can come through for you, what, what the end state is that you want to be in, the end goal, you're focused on that. Like, you know, like, oh, okay, I, I can be, you know, the type of guy who, the type of girl who, can do these things um, rather than, oh, I can't, it'll never work for me. It'll never work for me. And, and you know, we've seen, I, I mean, I've definitely seen things in my own life. And, you know, we, we talked on the earlier episode about how Brian was like, oh, you know, you don't understand. Like, I can't, you know, possibly, you know, get a good career going. And I'm like, what do you mean? You, you, you have experience working in sales. Of course, you can get a good, good career going. But, yeah, you know, right. that was that was where he was at at the moment. And, and <clears throat> so, we, you know, so I think, so that's, that is a huge thing. Like, don't, don't focus on that because it'll, it'll crowd out all the, 
all the opportunities you have. And instead, you want to be relaxed and open to the bridge of incidents, um, which are going to start appearing. And yeah. The other thing, guys, fuck your feelings. Seriously, fuck your feelings. They got nothing to do with it. So many of you guys are getting caught up in the emotional reality of these situations, and you take a little tiny molehill and turn it into a gigantic mountain because you let the fear creep in, you get all scared, you get emotional, you start rampaging with fear and all that, and it just gets out of control. Your emotions are really nothing other than telling you if you're thinking about something the right way or the wrong way. That's really all they are. They don't even create, right? Your emotions don't create your beliefs. Your beliefs create your emotions. So it's the belief that you got to change and you'll fix your emotions anyway. You guys got to start realizing everybody is here to help. It's all working out in your favor unless you tell the story you're fucked and nobody wants to help you. Yeah, we and then you'll start people. panicking and then that'll just augment the fear and then the fear will be a vicious cycle and you're like, oh, why aren't things working? Nothing's happening, you know. Be and more then you'll fear, waste fear, fear. all that time and then you'll worry about, well, now I've wasted all this time. They probably met somebody and then they meet somebody. You're like, oh my God, I totally created that. Great, great. That means you can uncreate it too. How did you create it? Go and look at what you did. I got really into that story. I couldn't stop telling it. I told it so much so that if you couldn't convince me otherwise, man, did I believe it. And wouldn't you know it, that third party showed up. That's why. So then all you have to do is do that same thing, but for what you want. If you know what you want, why do you guys keep wasting your time talking about what you don't want? Because when you do that, surprise, surprise, all you're going to get is more of what you don't want. If you're going to talk about things you're afraid of, you're going to get more things to be afraid of. But if you talk about how you have nothing to fear, all the obstacles are going to suddenly go away. It's really that simple. The story you tell will lead to what you believe, and what you believe is exactly what you will get. You guys are trying to get what you want instead of what you believe. It's like with SPs. You guys are all trying to change them instead of changing you. What makes them conform is your new story about you and what you think about yourself. And then that leads to you being able to see them only looking at you that way in a loving way because then you believe you deserve it. And why would anybody do anything other than be loving and kind to you, because now you see who you are, you see how loved you are by God, you're like, well, shit, if God loves me, everybody's gonna love me. Think about that. A lot of you guys take for granted the fact that God loves you, and you're like, well, that's great, that's great, but like my person doesn't love me. Shit, I'd rather God love me than anybody else anyway. <laughs> God is like, you know, getting that grade A on your restaurant. You know, the other people, who cares? If God loves you, it means everything's going to go smoothly for you from now on. If God loves you, he's going to make it very obvious to everybody else that you're lovable. The problem is you guys want them to do all that work for you. So you try to go change them and you're like looking at them going, no, 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 change. You want to love me. You want to love me. Really, what you got to say is, I am loved. It's really a prayer. God is, I am. I am loved. So you're yeah. saying, thank believe you, God. Believe you're I'm lovable. Loved. Yeah. If you believe you're lovable, everybody believes you're lovable. Right? It's like another person wrote in about wanting to change their features. I get it. There are things that I didn't, well, I don't know. I guess maybe I was harsh on myself about, but I was always a pretty confident guy. I never really worried much about what people thought about me. You know, so some of that stuff I, I can't understand. But I had a client, Anders, I told you about that girl. This woman was a large woman. She thought that that was a bad thing. Then she started to see herself 
as what she called a BBW, big, beautiful woman. I was like, I like that. She was like, I like guys that have six packs and look really good, but I also like chocolate cake. <laughs> I love me some sweets. I love me a good meal. I'm what you call a foodie. <laughs> and I kind of take it to the next level. But I know I'm pretty and I just feel like if I lost this weight, everybody would see how beautiful I am. I'm like, why can't they see you beautiful right now? In college, I blew out my knee playing football and I put on about 100 pounds. I did not suffer in the, the lady department. And I remember people would be like, how are you doing that? I'd be like, bro, I'm still handsome. I'm still charming. I'm still funny as shit. I'm just a little fat. Girls really don't care about that. Some girls really do. But in my mind, they didn't. I was like, girls aren't like guys. They're not superficial. So I just kept bumping into really hot girls who love bigger guys. <laughs> I remember even with my wife, if I get too skinny, she'll say, hey, can you stop? Because, like, I kind of like it when you're not perfect because then I don't feel weird about myself. <laughs> and I'm like, meanwhile, I'm always telling her how beautiful she is. <laughs> I can't stop. You know, same thing with my daughter. I'm all about the confidence with my daughter. I know right now that girls get confidence from their parents. So we try to be as encouraging and like, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, mistakes or lessons, all, all that. Like, we just try to build her up. You know, you're a kid, you're learning. That's what you're supposed to do. That's your job. You know, but this woman realized. Once she believed she was beautiful, she didn't have to have a nose job. She didn't have to lose weight. Everybody just started telling her how beautiful she was. And I remember she also kind of believed it because she remembered what she looked like thinner. So she just thought to be that beautiful again, she'd have to be skinny. But once she felt beautiful, once she believed she was beautiful, everybody believed she was beautiful. And she was dating some good looking guys. None of them cared about her dress size. None of them cared about what her nose looked like. If she had a unibrow, whatever it is you guys want to change. Right? <laughs> if you're short, skinny, fat, too I tall, mean, all, all bald. models have things about themselves they hate. So, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you can always find something to pick on yourself about. And the models that actually kind of break out are like the girl with vitiligo, right? She's got white spots all over her. She's considered beautiful. They're like little works of art all over her face, the contrast in her skin. Then there's the black model who was super dark from Nigeria during a time when that wasn't cool. And she made it cool and brought that back. Before it was like, you had to be bony and skinny. Anders, we're the same age. So we remember the Kate Mosses and the, the ears of the chain smoking supermodels that only drank yep. coffee and Diet Coke. Kim Kardashian would have been called fat back then. <laughs> now they don't care about those bony girls and there are women injecting and putting all kinds of stuff in their butt to where it's ridiculous. You know, Photoshopping the hell out of their waist. Some of this stuff makes no sense to guys like us because we didn't grow up with social media. We didn't even have cell phones, man. Like it was a big deal if you yeah. had a pager, you were rich, right? <laughs> And even if you had a pager, nobody could really page you. They didn't have a cell, a cell phone, you know? So they'd have to page you from a pay phone <laughs> and then put 911 so you knew call it because you'd be like, I don't know whose number this is. That was it. Like, it was kind of nice. I kind of liked not being so available. <laughs> you know, you guys want instant gratification. You want your boyfriends to be available now. Like, this whole thing with, like, if he doesn't text you back right away, Oh my God, you would have never made it in the 90s, right? It could be days before you heard back from people. Yeah, people's phones were busy all the time. People, yeah, some they, people they didn't, didn't even have, have proper machine. answering machines, which were Yeah, they didn't like, have caller ID, so they, did, they didn't even know you called. Yeah, nobody had any clue, yeah. You just had to catch them when you caught them, and that was people, it. People could go out of town, you'd have no idea. Yeah, yeah you'd be like, oh, you were gone all weekend? I thought you didn't love me. They didn't even think that. They're like, he's probably out of town. <laughs> No one's answering at his house. It means no one's home. I don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, he didn't double text. Andrews, do you know what a double text is? Because I No, what's, what's, this, what's this double text thing? I don't know. It's been explained to me many times, and it just sounds like you didn't put it all in one message. 
or like you texted twice before they responded, I still don't really know. Is that a good thing but or a bad thing? I don't know. I could not tell you. I hate when people like I tell you, I tell clients, everyone I'm like, hey, do me a favor, put it all in one message. I'd rather read that than like ping, 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 ping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'm like, uh, I'm on the phone. And my, yeah, my phone is like bugging out. You know, nobody still has really explained to me what a double text is, but apparently if you get one, it's really good. If you don't, it's the end of the world. Wow. You know, and that's, see, the, that's thing. the thing. That's the story people tell each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a circumstance that one unsecure person came up with and told the rest of you guys and the rest of you guys were like, really? Okay. I buy that. I blame TikTok. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So yeah, so many people all heard about it. TikTok, yeah, then they think it's true. TikTok is like just there to give you anxiety. Wait, I didn't even know that was a problem. That's a problem? Oh my God, I got to start worrying about it. You know? If you guys are doing this right, you are watching everything that comes into your brain. A mental diet means no crap allowed. It means no reacting. If you didn't get the answer you want from my sub or another sub, the funny thing is the other subs don't even answer these questions. They just erase it. And maybe they're smart. And maybe I just want to help too much. So I'm like, all right, let me give them a swift kick in the ass because I'm not their coach. I'm not going to be working with them. So I got to get them to knock this off. And then I got to smack them and straighten them out so they just listen and then send them on their way. And then tell them, by the way, also read. A lot of you guys <laughs> take that as like, what a dick. He doesn't want to help. No, what I don't want to do is summarize 12 books in a paragraph. Because if I write too much, you tell me, you didn't have to write a fucking story. You wrote a novel. All you had to do is tell me to do this and that. I did. And the three other posts. And they're like, kept, but, well, and, but how do you do it, though? Exactly, right? No, no, but don't, don't write a novel. Time, don't write a novel, but tell me how to do it. <laughs> but tell me how to do it. And then when you do, and it's too quick. I'm going to ask, yeah, but how do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah, but what if it's this circumstance? I had a client tonight. I love her. She is kicking ass, but she's also her own worst enemy because she keeps trying to poke holes in it. So she fought me for her first, like, month. But she was at least doing some of the stuff I told her, and she got some really good results. And she's like, so... I don't want to keep spending money, but I want more money. And then and she had all these stories and she's like, but the truth is, man, like the shit is working. So I'm going to go ahead and do another month and I'm going to listen to you this time and I'm not going to fight you. <laughs> Just tell me what to do. Tell me when to shut up and I'll do it. And she did. She hired me to get an SP that she was honest up front and said was married. And I said, you can hire me, but I'm not going to teach you how to get that guy. And she's like, I'll still hire you. And I was like, but I'm telling you, don't go get that guy. Don't use this to go get that guy. And I said, in fact, if you trust me and you do what I say, your husband will come around. I'm not going to lie. The guy was a little intense. She had a reason to want to leave, but she also had a bunch of stories. That's why he showed up that way. Mm -hmm. The second month we did, she started changing the story about him. And if you were to ask her about her husband now, she'll be like, I love him. Love Aww. him. So, so awesome. sweet. I don't even have to tell her. She's like, the grass is not greener on the other side. Right. It really is my story. She's almost blown away by how simple it is, which is why she keeps asking questions. But at least she's also going and doing the work. But we had a talk tonight about stop talking, right? She'll tell me, well, you know, work for this, but then this did it. And I'm like, see, because you're saying that with this situation, you get that result. You didn't have a story or any story or that story in this situation. You just said it and look at how fast it showed up. Oh my God, you're right. Very, very smart girl. Very smart, not girl, woman. <laughs> Lots of fun to talk to you. Great client, amazing personality. But it, she even sees now she was very negative. She used to tell me, everything you say is so negative. I go, because I'm repeating back to you what you say. <laughs> so if you think it's negative you're right i'm trying to tell you it's negative all i'm doing is repeating back to you what you just told me you're like god it's so negative 
<laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're right. It is. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's why I'm saying it back to you so you can hear how negative it sounds. But once she let go of her circumstances, like, she's on her way. Her thing now is she realized I am a little, she is a little lazy. And she's like, but how long does it take? And she's like, you know what? You're right. I'm just going to go start doing it. Because I'm like, it's all about persistence, discipline, and practice. Mm -hmm. And the sooner you get that stuff out of the way with, the easier it starts to get. I'm not going to lie. It sucks at first. Anders, remember, I would tell you, I'm going to break this damn mental diet. And everybody's like, just keep going. Mm -hmm. One more day, one more day. I was like, I can't take it. I didn't realize how negative I was. And now I can't stop with these thoughts. And I'm flipping every fucking thought. And it's impossible. I didn't believe I was this negative. I can't be this negative. And then one day, it just got quiet. And then I heard the second voice again. But this time, he was like, yeah, I can see that. I'm loved. Hey, you, you kind of are, right? I am loved. Yeah, well, you know, your dad loves you. Your sisters love you. Your daughter loves you. Your friends love you. And that voice was telling me all the people who love me suddenly. I was like, yeah, I really am loved. Yeah, you actually are really loved. And the voice started to agree with me. But man, did he fight. Remember, Andrews, I was like, I had to be like, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. Because <laughs> that voice was like, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. First night, eight hours of I love myself that fast. Trying to play with my daughter. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. And she's like, what are you doing over there? You just keep nodding your head. <laughs> You're like Rain Man. Yeah, 25 minutes to Wapner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then I was like, oh, my God. The clouds parted. The sun shined through. And not only did I get a feeling of peace and that I was loved, I remember literally saying this. Son of a bitch. You're going to give me all of it, aren't you? It's not even just about her. I'm going to get it all. And it's happening. I'm not going to get into the specifics because the other thing I learned is keep your mouth shut, <laughs> right? <laughs> keep it between you and God. You know? Keep focused on God. Let him keep telling you, showing you the truth too. And you just keep going, yep, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. Keep selling it to me. Take my money. You know? And then you start to see results. But a lot of you guys do the work for two or three days. And then you get up and you're like, where is it? Where is it? I didn't see anything. This is horse shit. And you quit. You go right back to your old story. You go back to getting all emotional, winding yourself up, spiraling, as you guys even call it, and freaking out. You can't do that. Neville's clear. That's Great, you're here now. Go ahead. Yeah, they, so they call it spiraling, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. that's a good word, and, and that's, yeah, it's a vicious, vicious cycle, yeah. Yeah, but that's exactly what it is. It's a cycle, right? The roller coaster. <laughs> One minute we're fine, next minute we're panicked. And you think in the moments of, bliss that oh this is it i'm done i'm i'm in the sabbath i'm in the sabbath i'll never go back to it and then you're like and i woke up today and man i was fucking depressed what happened where'd i go wrong you stopped doing it because you thought you were in the sabbath and you thought you didn't have to do any more work devil doesn't tell you to do that he says get to the sabbath and then just stay there until yeah. the shit shows up staying there means keep believing keep doing the work that you were doing that keeps you in the sabbath and then watch how fast it comes. Because when you're in the Sabbath, the work is actually very easy because you really do believe it's done. There is a calmness that comes over you. And the only way I can explain it is anything you say, you're like, yeah, I am loved. I'm loved. It's like a whisper. But it's so believed. And guys, you can do that right now. I had to remind myself of this. The other day, there was something I wasn't worried about, but I was like, oh, I don't like how much work I feel like I have to do on this. And I was like, hey, God, I'm giving this to you. Do me a favor. I want to wake up tomorrow with no anxiety, no nothing about this. Like, just take it. Here, it's yours. Take it, and tomorrow I'm going to wake up feeling good. I stayed up till 2 or 3 in the morning that night. 
for some reason, I woke up at 6 a.m. feeling really refreshed. But not only that, that peace mm -hmm. that you get when you're in the Sabbath, when you're really believing. Like God literally was like, hey, buddy, time to wake up. Look, it's all gone, right? You know? I've, I've noticed I've been reading a lot of the Neville stuff where he also talks about Blake. And then it's really funny. The, the guy yeah. who cuts my hair was interested in it and he wanted to talk about death too. But death, according to Blake and, and Neville and all that is not actual death. A lot of times when they talk about it, they're talking about dying from the, the state you were in and being reborn into the new state, right? No Absolutely. longer being the non-believer and resurrecting as the believer. You know, that's why Easter is such a big deal to us. Right? Absolutely. It's God's literal fulfillment of his promise that not even death can keep me from being here with you. Absolutely. Guys, yeah. even Jesus was afraid. When he was in the, the, the what was it, the garden, whatever, Basically, when he told Judas, go get them, do what you got to do, he's sitting there and they're just kind of waiting. And Jesus finally breaks down. He's like, please, if there is any other way, please take this away, Father. Please don't make this be. And who shows up? Right? Satan. He's like, hey, man, look, run. There's a path. Jesus says, but your will be done. Exactly. That's exactly what he says. He said, no, it's my father's will be done. But you're one with the father. So your will and God's will are the same. So you got to do what Jesus did. You got to say, no, thy will be done. Your will is clearly the same as mine because you're the one who put this in me. You're the one who gave me this desire. So clearly it is your desire also for me to have it, your will for me to have it. So I got to say, hey, okay. I'm going to stick with this. I'm not going to run. I'm going to see it through. It's going to suck for a little bit. It's going to be painful. But just like Jesus, you'll be resurrected and in heaven. You know? I can't even imagine what it must have been like. Knowing that was coming. And yeah. still having the courage to trust God like that. And I think, and, and so, you know, why did he trust? And part of it is because he knew what was coming, which was that he knew that on the other side of this was resurrection. He'd be sitting at the right hand of the father, that his, his bride would be the church. So he had all these, these good things to look forward to. And that's, that's a big part of it, right? Is he focused on that. And the Bible even explicitly, Paul even explicitly says that. that but that's what Jesus was thinking about was was, was the outcome in that state. Yeah, and so he, he wasn't worried. He wasn't worried. He wasn't focused on the circumstances. And and he had a road of pain ahead of him. The likes we'll never ever come close to. Even as bad as my situation was, Jesus is the one guy whose situation was the absolute worst. That ending, I can't think of a worse ending. Yet he yeah. still had the belief, and look where it got him. Not even death could stop him. They didn't do anything to him by killing him. They made him stronger. He was able uh, to show what God really... Here's the line, him. actually. <laughs> Fixing our eyes... This is from Hebrews 12, too. This is one of the lines. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him... Right? Joy was set mm -hmm. before Jesus. So before the joy set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Right? So that's that's it right there. So he, he we fix our eyes on Jesus, and Jesus was the one who, you know, he looked at the joy set before him, and then he endured all things you know, for us. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of, remember that movie, The Legend of Bagger Vance? I have, I don't think I've really seen that movie, though. I don't remember much about the plot. So it's a great movie about this guy. His name's Captain Juno. Matt Damon plays him. 
and he's the hero. He's this great golfer, and all of Savannah, Georgia, loves him. And he yeah. becomes Captain Juna, and he goes to war. And everybody in his battalion or platoon, whatever, dies except for him. And he has to come uh, back. It's like to survivor guilt. Like, yeah, he's got survivor's guilt, remorse, and then on top of it, they all kind of want to be like, "You fucker, you got everybody killed." There are no mm, men here, right. no sons, unit. no fathers. Yeah, and he's drinking himself to death. Wow. And then his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, her father opens this big golf course and it's the middle of the Great Depression and she's trying to restore Savannah to its like, you know, pride and joy. So she invites the great Bobby Jones and Walter Hagen to come have a, a match of all matches in the world's greatest golf course that's about to go bankrupt. And her father killed himself over because it was like a huge mistake. And he was he, like a lot of people in the Great Depression couldn't take it. There's this great side story about this little boy, Harley, who wants to be Juna's caddy. And he's embarrassed because his father went from owning his own business to being a street sweeper. And he's like, you know, so-and-so's dad said he it was beneath his dignity to do something like that. He's like, yeah, well, when everybody went under, your father, the reason he doesn't have any money is because he made sure he paid everybody and they could eat. Don't mm -hmm. tell that to what's-his-face's father who's sitting on his fat ass and has no morals. You know, he's like, your father looked fear and adversity in the eye and won. Mm -hmm. And you don't see that. He's like, that's a hero. I'm not even a hero. You worship me and I'm a drunk. <laughs> right. But in the movie, it's all about you just lost your swing. You just got to find your swing. And so the whole movie, he's showing Juna how to see the field, as he calls it. Really, what he's saying is you've got to see the truth. You've got to see the light. You've got to see God. You've got to see the hope. Hey, everybody, we're back. Sorry about that. We had a, a technical difficulty and it stopped recording. So we were talking about seeing the field, seeing the hope. So what happens is Juna starts to do well and he ties Walter Hagen and Bobby Jones and he's coming back and everybody's behind him and he starts getting in his head again and he gets a little cocky too. And he's like, oh, I'll make that shot. And he ends up like making a couple bad shots. And he starts to realize the people are kind of, again, getting upset. They're like, oh, he fucking blew it. And he's like feeling the pressure again. And he starts seeing all the boys in town that went to war with him dying and how he was responsible and how somehow he, how he survived again. And he's going to do the same thing to this town. And he starts shaking. And Bagger shows up and says to him, stop. He's like, you don't understand. What do I do? He's like, stop, stop doing this. And then what? Start walking, start moving, start getting away from this story. Don't ever come back to us. And he says to him, Juna, there is not a soul on this planet that doesn't have a cross to bear. We'll include this clip for you guys to see. But he says, there's not a soul on this planet that doesn't have a cross to bear, but you got to face yours and fight. And you know, you'll see it's not as bad as you think. In the end, the reward is greater. It's a great movie. You guys should check it out. For me, I feel like the way God talks to me is through movies because he knows how much I love them. He knows how much I love storytelling <laughs> and all of that stuff. So I always find these great movies, you know? And but again, again you got to sometimes go through hell to get to heaven, <laughs> you know? What is the saying? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go through hell. Nobody wants you know? to die. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to die. That's what the same thing as uh, dying is dying. I imagine. But yeah, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. <laughs> a lot of you guys want heaven, but you don't want to die. Actually, that's a better way of saying that because the old you has to die. Yeah, let them go. You don't even have to really suffer compared to the way Jesus did. Your suffering is like, okay, I got to get tough with myself. I got to take control of my own brain. Asking us how you do yeah, that is like asking like, us how you breathe. Like go of all the old just habits. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Old, old stories. Old media, old stories. I have to let go of all that. The old identity. Yeah. yeah. And just say, be gone. Be quiet. Like we talked about Neo and the Matrix. Stop. No. That's why Jesus talks about being born again, you know, so yeah. be born again of the spirit. And... No, notice in the movies when the hero really realizes who he is and does his hero thing, 
he doesn't really talk a lot then. Like they talked about this in the Avengers, how Tony Stark, they knew his death had to be quiet because he talked so much throughout the movie that he would finally shut up. Right? <laughs> but they were like, we love the I am statement because Thanos says, I am inevitable. And Tony looks at him and says, I am Iron Man, which is how his whole journey starts, right? He doesn't want to tell anybody he's Iron Man. And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I am Iron Man. I am. All right? And at the end, Thanos is like, I'm the destroyer. I'm an inevitable. He's like, well, I am Iron Man. Again. All right? And then he's quiet. They reshot him saying that because Robert Downey Jr. wanted him to just be quiet, just snap his fingers and die. But they were like, I think we should end it where we began. You know, Tony really recognizing who he is now. You know, it's brilliant. I think all this stuff is amazing. There's all these storytellers, writers, filmmakers, artists, musicians, everything trying to share their growth with you and tell you, I've been there too. But you guys only want to hear the sad part of the song. You love the sad part of the story. Most movies you watch are not really love stories. They're how they fell in love. What you like about it is that it seemed like they overcame this insurmountable, you know, uh, what is it, what a conflict. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot what I was saying there for a minute. You guys love that, right? You love when they rush into the train station to get the girl and they burst in the living room. You complete me. <laughs> what I learned is God completes me. Amen. When I start needing a woman to complete me or a friend to complete me or a parent, anybody other than God, they're going to fail. They don't. Yeah, then you're making them your source. Yeah, yeah you're, you're making, making them circumstances your, your source. Yeah, your idol. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. And, and you can't get anywhere doing that. God is the only thing that is going to fill that hole that you keep running through men and women with to do to do that you people who have an sp and then you're like oh i know what i'll do i'll date because i want to feel pretty and i want to feel loved or i want to feel handsome and attractive i want to know i still got the game whatever and you're like it's okay it's not how are you going to live in the end that you're with somebody and be dating somebody else it's gonna be really hard to convince yourself you're going to bed with your person after you just made out with somebody else mm -hmm. and all that did was be like wow she doesn't kiss like her. She doesn't feel like her. He doesn't taste like him. He's rough. He's this. He doesn't understand me. I didn't like the way he said this or that. They're just a constant reminder of why they're not your SP. But what you don't get is your SP is seeing that same thing. But in your mind, that's great for them. But it's not. You don't just fall out of love with people and completely forget them. You just put so much pressure on them, they couldn't handle it anymore. And then they're kind of fucked because they're like, and nobody can replace you. That sucks. That sucks. You're not really even getting to experience that part. Like they are, they're trying to do anything to replace you. But they're like, it's just a goddamn constant reminder that I had the one I loved, but I can't be with them because they're crazy. Because they need me to make them happy, and I can't. I'm still trying to figure out how to make me happy. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you both went to God and worked on yourselves, again, I credit my wife for this, right? I think we're not getting divorced. We're not doing. It. Let's take some time and work on ourselves. Still live together. Still work together. You know, do all that stuff, but like kind of ease up a little bit here, and put the focus more on God than the marriage for right now. And get ourselves happy and good. And maybe when we come back together, we'll both be in a good place and, and kind of have that happen again. She was so right. It was ridiculous. I was so scared. I was like, that's a cop out. That's bullshit. This is just going to lead to us getting a divorce. You just don't have the balls to say it. Say it. Say it now. Tell me you want a divorce. And then she goes, I didn't want to file, but you kept telling me either file or don't, and you wouldn't give me any time to think about it. And the lawyer told me to file, so I filed. 
Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, that's dumb. But it wasn't. I pressured her to file. Yep. I believe she was going to file. I was like, every time she leaves the house, she's not going on a walk. She's going to talk to a lawyer. She's plotting against me. Sure enough, she was. Andrews, you saw her in the beginning. This woman would never leave me, no matter what I did. I used to do things like, hey, I'm going to divorce you. Uh, well, fine. I'll, she would say, I'll run away. I'll never sign the paper, so at least I'll know I'm still your wife. You'll never find me. <laughs> and at least I'll know I'm still your wife. I don't want to live without you. And I was like, okay, she loves me. I'm good. Now I feel secure again. So fucked up. I had to forgive myself for that, and I had to make sure that I'm good so I don't do shit like that anymore. You guys have so much work to do on yourselves, you shouldn't even be worried about them yet. And if you're still taking things personally, get over it, man. We're trying to help you. But you're so out of control and in a spiral, you can't hear it. And then you think we're being mean to you and we're like, calm down. Yeah, it's interesting. I've definitely seen people get themselves into trouble by feeling like, oh, I'm not like, attractive. Or I need like circumstances to prove that I'm attractive. And they'll go to like, yeah. ridiculous then, like, lengths to, to try to get it proved to them. And it's like, this is yeah. ridiculous. That's it's like, you you're obviously like attractive. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's like you're not, it's, 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 it's some of these cases, it's like it shouldn't even be a debate. But yeah, it shows that what happens and then people freak oh, out yeah. and then they get themselves in, in trouble. And it's really, not really only that, you forget, you forget the reason you were so attracted to begin with is because you were loving in yourself and believing in yourself, or at least That's giving the appearance it, that you did. <laughs> yeah. Right? At least giving the appearance that you did. Yeah. You know? Is there, yeah, you're, you're confident and fun to be around. Yeah. yeah. Everybody wants to be around that person. Go to a bar and look around. The guy standing against the wall with his hands crossed, giving everybody a psycho stare. No one's going to come up and talk to that guy. He's going to be there all night. But the guy or girl who's in the middle of the crowd and everybody's laughing at him and talking, they're going to be like, I want to know what's so funny. I want to go over there and talk to that person. I learned that very early on. You know, just go have fun. What's the worst that happens? You know, if you're confident anyway, People flock to that because so many people are insecure. But also, you guys got to realize the reason you feel worse about yourself, too, is when you're in some of these situations, the way you react. Breaking the rules, not listening, not following directions, and then getting mad at the people on the sub for telling you, sorry, you can't do that here, and calling them assholes and everything else. And a lot of times, I'll be honest, it's me. You guys send me messages and... I'm not trying to be a dick. It comes across that way, I guess, but I'm like, hey, guys, one of the other rules is no DMs. And they're like, oh, of course, you just don't want to be challenged. It's not that I don't want to be challenged. I don't want to hear it. Why do I want to hear your bad story? Why do I want you to say it when it's going to keep you from getting what you want? But you missed that whole point because you're so convinced I'm trying to be mean to you, that I am trying to play God and I'll decide who gets to get their SP and who doesn't. Come on. Well, I'll be honest, guys. If you don't get your SP, it doesn't affect us. We would like for it to happen. We'd love for it to happen. But at the same time, if you're not going to do the work, how can you expect us to do it for you? If you're not going to care, why should we? All we are is a reflection of you. What you guys don't get is everything we're trying to tell you. A lot of you are even saying it in the comments was what you've been trying to tell yourselves. What you've been arguing against. But for some reason, if you hear it from us, it's like, oh, okay. Listen to yourselves. Listen to God. He's right there. He'll give you the answers like that. Anders, tell him, you are always telling me, you gotta go talk to God. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. And one of the things that's just on my heart, just having this conversation is, yeah, why why don't you guys go read? Um, and I, I was thinking, why don't you guys read the Law and the Promise? And look, yeah. there's all these stories in there. Um, 
and they're pretty crazy and i don't know maybe maybe you guys read those stories and you think oh those are all like made up like none of that actually happened maybe maybe that's the problem i don't know but in which case i don't know why you're no no why you're here anyway but i'm but i'm saying like but read the stories look how crazy they are and 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 think okay yeah people my story about neville and the boat right there there was a guy that found all the stuff the manifest everything and showed that neville went from third class to first class that he really did take that trip everything that's cool. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, so it's like, okay, well, I'm, I have such difficult circumstances. I have such crazy problems. Okay. Well, look at like, you know, Neville Goddard and all the crazy things he went through and look at all the other stories he talks about and the law and the promise and all the crazy things they went to. I mean, you know, he, Neville Goddard got shipped off to war. He got you know trapped in Barbados, you know, stuff like that, or he didn't know how he was going to get to Barbados, things like that. So there's lots of examples we can look at and in that. And so, yeah, ask yourself, okay, let's, how can I how can I tell a different story about this? Okay, yeah, these guys had impossible circumstances. Um, how do they, you know, get through the impossible, you know? And certainly I don't see a whole lot of uh, whinging and complaining in the stories, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's uh, a lot of, yeah, we were confident that, you know, things would work out. And we focused on you know, believing that things would work out and then also being in the state, not just sort of, oh, that'd be nice if that happened, but really inhabiting the state of being accomplished and being there and being like, okay, what would it be like for me to be at my final destination, um, be at Barbados, be in the house I want to live in, you know, be have that ring on my finger and be married. Um, so they would really focus on it. So yeah, go 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 read the stories and and see how see how they tell the story, see how Neville tells the story, and okay. compare it with how you guys are telling the story, and then and then come back and ask some questions about okay, well why 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 why, why would why did you do it this way? Why did you do it that way? You know, what, what's, and, what's and you're going to see that each person had a completely different circumstance, yet the solution was the same. You're going to notice they all say something similar to this. I remembered what Neville taught us, though, and I ignored the circumstances and only focused on the new story. The other problem you guys have is this goddamn internet and social media. You're literally logging onto something where everybody's you pushed out, so they're all going to tell you your greatest fears, too. Get off of it. Get off of it. Go read it for yourself. Don't listen to somebody's paraphrase, because even when we try to explain some of this stuff, that's why Anders reads the direct Bible quote, because he doesn't want to misquote it. Yeah. We're human. We can make mistakes. We might miss something. Get it from the source. Go to the Bible. Go to Neville's books, where he also quotes the Bibles. You know? Get it from the source. Don't take a chance on it. Learn it the right way. Be patient. If you're doing the work, time stops. They're not going anywhere. Your desire, not going anywhere. It literally is all conspiring for you. Mm -hmm. All that's going to happen is they're going to stay single because they won't be able to find anybody. And they're going to be like, I can't find anybody because this person was perfect. And I let them go. I blew it. Now I can't stop fucking thinking about them. Oh, my God. What did I do? Ah!" And they come chase you. And then when they come chase you, don't go running back. If they don't show up saying, I love you. I miss you. I want to be with you. Be my girlfriend right now. Be my boyfriend right now. I can't live there. Ah!" Just if they're like, hey, how you been? Leave it alone. I tell all my clients that the ones who listen, they see the progression. It goes from, hey, how you doing? Hey, are you okay? Hey, did you get my text messages? Hey, I'm starting to get worried. I'm about to call your mom, please. Look, I just want to talk. I realize I love you. I made a mistake. Please just answer me, please. Can we just get back together? Uh. The ones who, as soon as they show up and they mess with the middle, they're not ready. That's why they jump. And then they start thinking, okay, well, he did set up a date with me, but I don't know if he's changed. Maybe he doesn't want to marry me. And they show up and the person's like, I don't want to be with you. I just wanted to say what's up. <laughs> I care about you, but I don't love you. Yeah, because that's what you were worried about. Well, I just wanted to sleep with you because that's what you were worried about. <laughs> if you're really in the Sabbath, it doesn't matter. You're not being rude if you don't respond back. None of it matters. You understand you're in control of everything. If you don't respond to them and you tell them you come chase me, they'll just come chase you. If you really believe, you got nothing to worry about anyway. 
You're not, those thoughts are not going to cross your mind. I promise you, when you're in the Sabbath, you don't give a shit. You're like, whatever, it'll be there when I get back. It's coming to me. I'm going to go live my life today. I already got plans. Let them catch up to me. I'll be at Six Flags. You want to propose? Come propose me, I guess, at Six Flags. Whatever <laughs> it is you're doing, right? Just go do your thing. Then when you come home, watch how they're on your porch. I miss you. I love you. I've been sitting here in the rain for six hours. You're like, that is crazy. <laughs> Why? That's psycho. <laughs> right? Suddenly you'll realize you're the SP. But you got to start seeing yourself as the SP. You got to start seeing yourself as the catch. You got to believe you're beautiful. Guys, getting your nose to change is not going to make that part of you heal. It has nothing to do with your nose being crooked. And I can tell you women, especially if you ask guys, the shit you hate about yourself is usually the stuff they like, right? <laughs> I noticed all these women before big butts were big, they're like, I hate my butt. And guys are like, I love your butt. <laughs> I'm an ass man. I hate my little boobies. I love little boobies. I hate my ears. I like pin back ears. I like big ears. They're distinctive. I like a distinctive nose, whatever. The stuff you usually hate about yourself is the stuff that everybody loves about you. The things you think make you dorky or quirky or weird, that's what actually makes you stand out from everybody else and makes you special. It's your gift. Mm -hmm. Embrace that shit. Say, this is why I'm amazing. I mean, you got it in the media right now. You got that singer Lizzo. By all standards, you have shows like American Idol, this and that, are like, you can't be fat, be a pop star. You can't be this and be a pop star. You can't be this, you can't be that. And Lizzo's like, fuck it all. It's bad bitch o'clock. <laughs> right? She doesn't care. Everybody's like, I like her. Let your freak flag fly. <laughs> Trust that God made you that way because that's what makes you special. Tell yourself, I am beautiful. Start to see yourself through God's eyes. I remember in my vows, I literally said, I promise to see you the way I see you today through God's eyes. And I lost track of that. And I had to go do it again. You have to start seeing yourself through God's eyes because in God's eyes, you're perfect. You don't need to lose weight. Now, listen, if you're unhealthy and stuff, yeah, do it for that. Do it for you so that you're around longer because lots of people love you and we don't want to see you gone. But we don't give a shit. We just want you there. You guys are missing out on life. I don't want to jump in pictures because I feel gross. My nose is weird, whatever. Meanwhile, you're no longer part of those memories with all your friends. I see people with kids. They won't jump in the picture because they don't like the way they look. Then you die and your kids have no pictures with you, no memories with you. We try to take pictures with our daughter constantly. Our family is big on photographs. My daughter and I love playing with the filters and just taking crazy pictures. She loves doing it with everybody. We have got hard drives full of photos. <laughs> you know, I stopped caring a long time ago. But then I also did things like take better care of myself and get in shape for me. And I stopped worrying about all that stuff. And I was like, it's, it's too important to the kid. I got to just suck it up and go do it for her. And if I feel uncomfortable, then go do something about it. And a lot of you guys just want somebody to come in and save you, and they're not coming. That's why you don't like me, because I'm letting you know this is as good as it gets. A kick in the ass for five minutes to wake you up, but you got to go do it. And that pisses you well, off. Well, yeah, if, I mean, if you're expecting somebody else to come in and, and be your source, it's not going to happen. The only person who's going to do that is Jesus. I mean, that's yes. <laughs> otherwise, yeah. like, you're, it's not happening. Ironically, the guy who got me to see all this was when everybody else, when I was like, oh, you don't understand, it's going to happen, I can't stop it. And they were like, maybe it's your bridge of incidents and this has to happen, you'll get remarried. Da, da, da. This one guy's like, yo, bro, you want to get divorced? I'm like, no. He's like, don't fucking get divorced. I was like, you asshole. How dare you say that to me? It's not like it's in my control. He's like, actually, bro, it's 100% in your control. You're literally making this happen. Every time you talk about a divorce, you're one step closer to it. 
So shut the fuck up about it and don't ever say that again. Instead, say your marriage is great. You're in a happy, healthy, loving marriage. Don't ever, don't ever acknowledge it. There's a really funny video where this guy takes his two sons and they're little. They're like three and five and it's Halloween and they're at McDonald's and you just see the two kids and the dad can't stop laughing. He's like, yo, this is the funniest thing. He's like, watch, they won't even look to the side. And then he lifts the camera up and you see three guys. One's just like Freddie. One's dressed like Jason and one's just like Michael Myers. And all three of the villain guys are like staring at the kids. And the kids are like, <laughs> don't look, just eat my chicken nugget and stare straight ahead. And they're like, the two brothers are like looking at themselves and the dad can't stop laughing. He goes, it's like, he thinks if he looks, they're going to kill him. <laughs> He's like, what's wrong guys? What's wrong? And they're like, shut up dad. And they're eating their chicken <laughs> That's how you got to be. Don't look, don't look. Those kids were smart. They're like, if we don't look at them, they don't exist. Yep. Do that with your problems. Don't let them exist. Don't give them any power. I'm glad we, we talked about this. I hope this kind of shed some light for you guys and you don't think we're being mean to you guys. It is kind of tough love, but really it is like, hey, you cannot tell that story. If you keep telling that, you're going to destroy yourself. It's like getting mad at us for saying, don't walk in front of the bullet train going 300 miles an hour. You're just going to like go splat. And you're like, you don't understand. You forgot how tough this was. You just want to belittle people. I'm not belittling anybody. I'm like, you can't tell that story. It's literally in the rules too, for a reason. It's not because I don't want to help you. But guys, notice how when you haven't read and I answer your question, all that you have is more questions because you're like, that doesn't make any sense. How is that possible? How does that work? <laughs> well, if you would read the book, he tells you. He explains it in great detail to where it makes a lot of sense. Because when I coach people who've read it and I explain it in a little bit more detail to them, because I have time to do that with them, they go, oh my God, that was actually really simple. When you say it that way, it makes a lot of sense. So I try to get in and get out and say it the way I've said it to other people that made it click for you guys. Unfortunately, a lot of you guys think it's rough. It's not rough. I just don't have the same amount of time. I'm not a coach on the sub. I'm there to give you a fresh set of eyes. We are there to support you and be a loving community, but you got to give that support to get it. You got to follow the rules. You can't be a jerk and then expect for us to be like, okay, we forgive you. We'll just be, give you what you want so you can keep coming back and abusing us. No, you're on a sub where people love themselves now. They don't put up with the bullshit anymore. Not because we're being mean, because we're like, we have to protect ourselves. We cannot allow this behavior back. We're ex-drunks. We don't want to hang out with drunks. We can't have you coming here and us getting wrapped up in the drama and the old behavior. We got to stick to our rules. Our life is too valuable now. We've fixed and done too much work, and we're going to protect it. We'll help but also, you. this is the best thing for you guys. And yeah. you, you have to snap out of it, and instead you got to focus on positive things. You got to focus on living in the end and focus on that and that's what's going to help and it's going to be a, a good thing for you long term um, that's well, why i brought anders on this too is because the big thing i wanted to show you guys was i'm not getting mad at you i'm showing you the reason i tell you to stop doing it is because i did it and it didn't work out well for me anders was the witness to all the time i wasted doing this shit. And he can be a voice for me too. You're like, well, we don't have any bad story about Anders, but even Anders got sick of it when Brian did it. Okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe Brian has a right to be a little sick of it. Maybe I should hold myself to the same standards I'm holding this guy to, who I don't even know, but because I've read his stories, I think I'm not a guru. I don't want a following, a cult-like thing. People have accused me of all kinds of stuff like that. I don't think you guys are like that. I think there's a good group of you that really is starting to understand that we cannot talk that way anymore. And you are also starting to focus on God and not Goliath. And you're saying, I don't want these people on here either. Not because again, we're trying to be mean. The people that are getting in trouble, I usually don't even catch it. Somebody else does, a bunch of you guys report it to me. So it's not even me that really has the problem with it. It's them because they're like, 
we are trying, not trying, we're doing it. We're getting there. We don't want any other thing coming in and messing it up. If you want to join us and do it right with us, by all means, we'd love to have you. And the smart ones are not getting on there, writing a story about every little epiphany they have, and then trying to answer questions for people. They're like, no, because that's going to distract me. And the people that do that, that I say that to, they don't get mad at me. They're like, you're right. I'm getting distracted. You're right. I was feeling good and I want to help, but you're right. I got to finish it. That's the best way for me to help is to finish it and come back with the finished story. All the epiphanies. None of it is designed to hurt you. It's to just keep you on track because God knows there's so many distractions. You're new at this. You're like a baby. You have ADD. We're just trying to keep you on track. That's it. Trying to keep your focus on God. I get it because I was like this and Anna's like, no, no, shift back over here. No, 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 shift back over here. Oh, see, you were <laughs> angry and you just screamed and yelled at me. Oh, yeah, you're not angry. You just said you put a nail in Jesus' cross. It's definitely not angry, right? <laughs> and I do the same thing. You, got. you don't fucking understand. You've never been through it. You're so lucky. Andrew Zill telling me, like, I got problems too. I couldn't see him because I was too wrapped up in my own drama. I wasn't being the greatest friend at that time. You know, just trust in God, guys. Nobody's out to get you. Everybody's here to help you, but you got to help us help you too. You got to read these books so you understand. So when we give you some answers, you go, ah, that makes sense. You're right. I forgot he said that, but I do know he said that because I read it. So that makes sense when you remind me of that. Ah, you're right. I didn't realize that I was still telling the bad story. You're right. That's just a story. I caught it. You're right. I'm not supposed to do that. You're right. I'm being double-minded. But if you don't know any of that stuff and I say you're being double-minded, you go, what the hell does that mean? There's a guy that does it every day. You don't tell me what it means. You just tell me I'm double-minded. You just tell me to do the work, but you don't tell me what the work is. Yes, we do. <laughs> the work is read, study, make it a lifestyle, practice it daily, focus on other things first instead of the big problem. Keep your eyes on God. That is the work. Consistency, discipline, persistence. That is the work. Not start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. Because every time you stop and you spiral, you go, well, fuck, it took me forever to get there. Now I've got to do all that work again. And eventually you're like, this is exhausting. If you push through, I know it's going to suck. You're going to feel like you're losing your mind. And then one day you wake up and you're like, the clouds part. It's like, hallelujah. Everything's just calm, right? God's like, welcome to the other side. Way to kick your fear's ass and keep your focus on me. Like Jacob, right? He knows he's getting his ass kicked by God. He can't beat him. He's like, well, I'm not letting you go to your bless me. And he's like, congratulations. <laughs> you took your ass whooping and you hung in there. You're a believer. God accepts your battle. But that's not even what's going on here. God's trying to help you. You're telling the story that he doesn't want to help you. You're telling the story that nobody wants to help you. You're telling the story that it's unable to be done, that your circumstances are the worst. Usually the people who say their circumstances are the worst and I don't understand, mine weren't that bad. When they tell them to me, I'm like, oh my God, I wish those were my circumstances. I would have taken that 10 times in a row compared to what I, <laughs> I did. And then I look at Jesus and I'm like, shit, I'll take what I had way over what he had. <laughs> My shit does not seem so bad. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. You're right. You win. You win. Every time, hands down, you win. But then I say, I got to remind myself how he was and try to be as close to that as I can be. I'm going to fail, but I got to keep doing it. I got to keep doing it. Because eventually we hopefully get there, whether it's here, in the next life, the next place, whatever. What if this is all just so we can experience being a creator? What if everything that happens to us, we ask to have those bad things happen to us so we could learn those lessons and grow? Then you wouldn't be so mad at those people for hurting you because it means they loved you so much they risked losing you forever so you could go experience what you wanted to experience and learn what you needed to know 
so that you could become closer to God, so you could be one with God, so you could be God of your world. Then all of a sudden, they don't seem so bad. They don't seem so mean. What if us giving you a hard time about telling your bad story leads you to going, well, I'm going to show those guys. I'll just go do it finally. Fuck them. I'll do it without their help, and I'll come back, and I'll tell everybody, fuck you guys. I didn't need your help. I did it. See? These guys don't know what they're talking about. Great. I hope you do that. But I have a feeling if you just go do it, you're going to be like, shit. Kind of makes sense now. We had a guy from one of those other subs that used to badmouth me. He was like, I made fun of him. I made a meme about him, everything. And now I'm on my honeymoon with my wife, who I got back. And we're going to go back from our honeymoon to the house. And I finally stopped making fun of him for saying, you got to believe. And I just started to believe. And the sub I was on didn't get me shit. And then trusting and doing what he said, and not even what he said, what God said, got me what I wanted. God is the ticket. It's not scientific. It's God. Not religion, God. Absolutely. He always comes through for you guys, but that has to be your story too. God does not give a shit what you play. He's just happy when you're playing. He cleans you up. He sends you back out. You're always learning and growing anyway. So why is it a bad thing? Anytime you mess up, it gives you and him a chance to become closer, for him to work through you and show the world, too, that anybody can be changed, any circumstance can be overcome with God's love and belief in God. Like, you're doing him a favor, too. He tells you, I'm here for the sinners. When Jesus finally said, I'm going to start telling everybody who I am, he didn't go to rabbis, he didn't go to scholars, he didn't go to anybody. He went to this well and spoke to this lady who was considered the town outcast because she had five husbands and all this stuff. And he asked her for a drink of water. She's like, why would you want my water? First of all, it's going to be hot because I'm not allowed to come here when it's cool because I'm shunned. Second, I'm a Sumerian. Aren't we dirty to you people? Third, do you know who I am? And he's like, well, that's exactly why I came to you. I'm not here for the holy men and the rabbis and the scholars. I'm here for people like you to let you know it's over. You're saved. You're forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. You're clean. You're free. Now go and tell everybody I told you that. That show, The Chosen, is great. When Jesus starts telling everybody, they're like, this is blasphemy. He's telling people they're forgiven of their sins. Only God yeah. can do that. And he's like, I'm God. I'm the son of man. Of course I can tell them they're forgiven. And they're like, it makes no sense that the Messiah would come and collect the worst of the worst. It absolutely does. He's not here for those who are doing it right. He's here for the fuck-ups. My show is literally, <laughs> we sold it by saying, even a shithead does good sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what it says in the Bible. Is, uh, those who cry out to Jesus will be saved, right? So that's why he's coming for the sinners, because they're the ones who... You know that they need help. Yeah. yeah, they're the ones who need help. They want they want help. They want a good relationship with God. They they want God's mercy. They they value His love. Yeah, it's when you let your pride and ego get in the way, and you think you've been wronged, that you don't cry out to God. You kind of yell at Him, and He's like, "Okay, go ahead and vent. I'll listen." Yeah, or you're like, "Oh, I'm so perfect. I always I always do the right thing. I'm always yeah, such a great guy." <laughs> I'm not. I'll I'll be the first to admit it. I get I'm rough around the edges, but I kind of think it's part of my charm. <laughs> so, you know, there are people that really like it and people who don't. But the one thing is, if you spend enough time with me, you'll be like, he does care and he really did help. So who really gives a shit how he does it if he gets it done? You might not like me at the end of it. Who cares? But you'll be like, yeah, but like, I'd still go back to him. You know, I think he really does care. Yeah, and I think the big thing too about what we're talking about is a lot of people just find it so hard to believe that, yeah. oh, it's going to work out. But it's like, okay, well, we're pointing out to you that you already are in good standing with God. You already are. He's already, that's why he died on the cross. He already did reach out to the sinners. Um, yeah. You already are in that situation. Um, good standing with God, just, we just always forget it all the time. We always feel like God's holding something back from us or... Yeah. We're not good enough or, or something or other. We have 
story and excuse as to, as to why it won't work for us. But it's we're actually we're actually good now, and we just have to believe that we are. And and then we really believe that we are, then we'll start acting acting like it. <laughs> yeah, you you got to get out of the victim mode and thinking people owe you stuff and this and that, and just get into the save me mode go to god and be like hey save me i'm gonna give you all my problems i'm gonna lay them at your feet like you tell me to i give them to you here take them this shit is too much yeah, right absolutely go and to that, god don't go to other people don't get mad at them don't lash out at people you love all that stuff because mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of you guys will tell me you don't understand i would never do this stuff to my sp i'm like look you don't know me and you talk to me this way the one thing i do know is the people that we love we definitely don't hold back with we usually treat them worse. So if you're treating me bad, I can imagine how you were with your person or the people you're having issues with. Or more importantly, God. Yeah. Right? You we're probably all the cruelest to God. I was. Which is why I had so much trouble believing he was going to come save me because I'm like, I'm a mm. dick. I'm an absolute dick. And then I said, let me stop being a dick. Then I looked at the sacrifice and I was like, wow, that is insane. And why am I like... What more could he have done? Yep. It's still not good enough for me, but it's because I won't go to him. I won't trust him like he's telling me to. I won't buy into this. Everything's clean. I got a clean slate. I'm forgiven. I feel this need to be put up on the cross. Like they said, we all got our own cross to bear. But you keep going. You know? It's never going to be as bad as the one Jesus was on. You know? Yeah. Look at the things that are good about your situation and be grateful for them. Start saying, well, at least it's not this. Well, I'm actually pretty lucky. Because this is still working. That's still working. This is still going on. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are big, big things. Like, you know, you got to have forgiveness. So... Because you don't want that on your heart. The Bible is really clear about that. You want your prayers to be answered. And then the other yeah. big part is go out talking God with being grateful, being grateful for what he has had, what he has done for you, what's, what's being done for you today. I mean, it's like, hey, you got to, whatever it is, you got a roof over your head, you had a had a hot meal, you have a, even if you have one friend, you know? <laughs> yeah. So just to kind of yeah. recap and wrap this up here, the things that, those of you who are doing wrong that are not getting it done are mm -hmm. you're not reading. You're not really understanding God's words and Neville's explanation of those words in more detail too. So you don't really understand that this whole thing is about you and you and God, that your SP, your circumstance, none of it has anything to do with it. It's all about once you believe in God and you believe you're loved and you're forgiven, everything, you believe everything is possible, therefore it becomes possible. You get out of the way and you let God work his magic. And like Neville with his person, all you did was just keep going to bed, believing it was done and being grateful for it. And then the roommate will move away. The girl will come back and the ex-wife will give you the divorce. And you won't have to lift a finger. At that time, Neville wasn't worried about the feeling, all the stuff you guys get bogged down. The other thing is, you guys keep looking at the emotional reality versus the reality. Can't do that. Fuck your feelings. All they are is an indicator if you're feeling, thinking about it the right way or the wrong way. So if you're crying and you're upset, say, can't do this. I'm not on a good mental diet. I broke my mental diet. I'm creating bad stuff now. You're not trusting in God. You're not looking at yourself through God's eyes. You're being hard on yourself. You're not forgiving yourself. You're not forgiving others. You're not letting God in. You're not keeping your eye on God. And finally, you're not being disciplined and persistent. It's not going to happen overnight for a lot of you guys because Neville tells you, you have two choices. Most of you won't be able to do the first, which is just jump, really 100% believe, and you'll get it right away, and then you're on your way, and you're done. But a lot of you won't be able to do that, so you need to test, persist, not tell the old story, not even look at it. Like those little kids in the McDonald's, they're like, oh, I'm not looking at Freddy Krueger. I'm going to keep eating my chicken nuggets, and everything is fine as long as I stare at my brother. 
God is your brother. Keep staring at God. Keep eating your chicken nuggets and you'll get out of there alive. Persist. Make it a way of life. Be a child of God in all ways. Let God love the shit out of you. Go be needy with God. He will let you be as needy as you want to be. And he has infinite patience to just keep going. Nope, you're loved. Nope, yep, I'm still love you. Yep, still here. No, you're loved. No, of course you can't ask that too many times. <laughs> no, no, just cry out. Yeah, I'll be right there. I'll run to you. So stop doing those things and watch how things start to change. Stop with those stories. Stop saying what you don't want to have happen and only say what you do want to have happen and nothing else and watch how it changes. I promise you, you'll get results like you've never seen before. So, Anders, do you have anything you want to say before we wrap up here? Anything you want to add? No, I think that's that's great. Um, but, yeah, if there's some people who are new, um, you know, read some of the stories in Law and the Promise, maybe make some some comments about how this episode spoke to you and maybe you saw some new perspectives and some of these stories or whatever it is, just um, tell us, uh, and tell guys, us if God like revealed I, something new to you. Yeah. Like we've said, any book is a good place to start. Yes. There's not one book better than another. You have to read all of them anyway. You don't have to read them in order. I, you know, you can look it up and you'll definitely see Neville's progression in his beliefs too. Like the whole, you don't want to marry that guy. You want to just get married to, no, I want to marry her. So I married her, you know, from doing sats and all this work to, oh no, I said it for three minutes. It's good. It's done. <laughs> I went in my mind's eye real quick and yep. And that's done. After all those years, he literally could just go into his head for three minutes, see it done once with such imagination and feeling. But again, because he practiced it every day. Yeah, it's a lifestyle for him. He sucked at first, too. Remember, he couldn't get out of the army at first. He couldn't get the woman to divorce him at first. All that stuff. But he persisted and never looked at the problem and only went to God. And every time he got out of it, every time. That's what you got to do, guys. So, as always, we intend for this episode to really speak to you. And give you the answers that you need to get to where you want to be. To become the person you want to be. Absolutely. But keep asking yourself what that looks like. Write it down. Be specific. And then every night say, isn't it wonderful now that I'm the person I always wanted to be? Thank you, God, for solving all my problems. Isn't it wonderful that my life is amazing now? Only tell those stories. God always comes through for me. God never fails me. So, again, guys, we hope this helps. We kind of were struggling tonight as to what to talk about because the truth is there's only so much of this stuff. It's so simple. There's only so much you can talk about. So some of these podcasts will probably be repetitive, and we apologize, but hopefully the people who didn't hear it the first time will hear it the second time, or if it didn't sink in the first time, it'll sink in the second time and the third time and whatever because we're going to keep coming back and – keep telling you guys the same stuff until you listen and you're writing your success story too. So we love you guys. We wish you all the best and we will see you in the next one. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.